So yesterday we did the first test for our suspension setup. We already have the braking miles on the bike. We've been getting into the throttle more and more and more. Everything on that end of it is going great. You just couldn't have a, a more fun break-in time. I did some experimenting with the new camera mount, the heavy duty one. That seemed to cure a lot of the, the fuzziness we had on the, the first day of using the onboard mount. But I like the jacket mount better myself. I'm just still experimenting with this and I'm trying to pass on what may be useful information. Now, day one I had the shock in the back set. I realized after riding and after doing my own little old school test, the back of the bike is softer than the front. So I started the first day of testing, put the shock up two notches and put the hydraulics on setting one. Today I went up two more notches and I'm on setting two. So I've stiffened it up. That is three settings to the hydraulic, three turns to the hydraulics, not settings. I'm in two turns, or I should say out two turns. So I'm, I'm two thirds of the way to being full stiff, and maybe a third of the way of being to the end of the shock spring travel. And what I realized is this bike is really has nice compliance suspension. And that's one of the things that makes this a really wonderful bike for me because I don't like at this point in my life I don't want to come home after three or four hours like I just been mugged. So I need to show these side by side just to show one is just a little bit thicker on the part that would keep it from doing this wiggling back this one is the more solid of the two if when I get the full throttle runs through the gears if it starts to vibrate I'll make a reinforcement part for that but right now it seems fine. I always use two of these little barrette for women's hair thing just to make sure the camera, this little latch that holds the camera on, if that ever would have failed, I don't want to lose the camera. So a few things that worked out great so far. Everybody likes the polished wheels. In fact, when we were up at the Ducati place, everybody, the first thing they said, hey, you polished the wheels. Same thing, same thing with the exhaust system. Everybody noticed it. In fact, a couple of people asked me, did, did it come that way? And, well, not exactly. The radar mount and that protective material we put under the magnets, that seemed to work really well. And again, all these things, all these little mods are on the previous videos. I'm trying to keep all of the MT-09 videos right together on the channel. So somebody that would be interested, or if you just bought one and you're bored to death, you can just go right through the whole set. And they're all on my channel, of course. One of the things I always say, this bike has a hundred little features that I've uncovered that I really like. One of them is the clutch pull. It's a slipper clutch. It is the easiest clutch. You can pull, pull this clutch in with one finger. And it's super, super smooth taking off like from a stoplight. A nice little feature I did not expect. Now I changed the instruments from the odometer to my trip meter. And I got 65.7 miles. The reason I'm checking the mileage, I went almost to the end of this, about 60 miles before that gas gauge moved. And if mileage, if you cycle through this, it pretty much tells you there's the odometer. And well, here's what I want to find out. Oh, look at this, 84.5 miles a gallon. Actually, I don't know how it figures that, I, but it does. I have to assume. They know what they're doing at Yamaha, but that's nice. The R1 does that too, by the way. And not really interested in trip two yet. Not really interested. I want trip one back on there. Because what I like to do, it's my personal thing that I like to do. I was using A mode yesterday. And it's very nice that you can see the traction control setting in the A mode. It's very easy at a glance to pick up on it. And the speedometer numbers are nice and big. But the key thing is... I like to go, I want to see where this gas gauge is at about 100, 110 miles. Most of my bikes go 100, 110, and then I get a little, eh, I, I don't, because where I'm riding, there isn't a gas station every two miles. So somewhere around 100, 110 miles, I like to fill up the tank. I don't like to get too cute about it. Now, another nice feature of the bike, and it's something I, I really appreciate, it shifts smooth as glass. I don't have a quick shifter on this probably in the future at some time I'll get one right now we're just at the end of the break-in period maybe maybe another thousand miles and I'll think about it but 
but the bike shifts beautifully. Now, not all the bikes do that. The best, the best shifting bike I have is the GS. That just seems to glide into gear. And when you're at a stoplight and you go to put it in gear, it doesn't go clonk and drop in like you, like you drop the hammer into the transmission. This is really a nice shifting. The way they have it set up or the way Yamaha has it, it's just wonderful. Now, I've been using chain wax on it about every two or three rides. I just don't want the chain to get dry. And for the people that hate these fenders, today I ordered the Graves Fender Eliminator Kit. I'll make a separate dedicated video of installing that. And believe me, I hope it fits perfectly because it's pricey at, a, at $150. I'm hoping it's going to really look nice. And no matter what, I had originally thought I was going to make one. And when I thought about it, I said, it's just going to just going to be crazy because here's the reason. You need to make the blocks. You need to have a set of blocks to go around the axle because that's what takes the place of this this part and I just thought well I bit the bullet and that's one of the things I'll wait for a rainy day of course that I want that to be right I mean this is my baby so with the suspension setting set we're out for another day of testing assuming the weather is going to hold up today we should get another 100 miles on the bike roughly 100 miles because I've been stopping and shooting a lot of pictures while this bike is really new like this I just get a real kick at it, just putting it on the side of the road and taking pictures. And I'm hoping you're enjoying some of the video. We're trying to make it as good as possible. And I learned a valuable lesson yesterday. If I'm going to stand in front of the GoPro camera, you got to shut the bike off because it picks up the sound of the bike more than the voice. That was a big mistake. I apologize for yesterday's video. Now, I thought of a really good analogy that you can use for suspension tuning, suspension settings. And it comes from my years of being an expert level modeler, model airplane pilot and builder. And what we would do is we would go to one of the uh, tournaments around the country, or in my case, to Brazil and to England and wherever. And what happened is you would have people that lower skill level people, and they'd say, fly my plane, trim it for me, fly my plane, trim it, fly. And then I'm sure many people will understand this, my modeling friends, and you would get it set in a matter of a very short amount of time and say, it's perfect. And then what would happen, you let the guy that owned the plane fly, you go, oh, it's too sensitive. Oh, it's not sensitive enough. It's pulling my arm off. It's not pulling my arm off because it's the same with suspension. I would bet any money if you were to ride some expert level track bike, it would, be, it would be totally different from rider to rider. Riders have personal preferences, just like I explained on the last video about Josh Hayes. And it took me so long to get this R1 set up to the way I wanted to ride it. And I was comfortable riding it, and it did exactly what I wanted it to do. And it, it doesn't come easy. And I, I probably, realistically, if I had Josh Hayes set it up for me and take it around a track, I probably wouldn't like it. But that is the truth about suspension. What works for one person or what's comfortable, another person wouldn't like it at all, and it's it's all subjective. And for, for me, the only person I want to be comfortable on this motorcycle is me. And when I achieve that, I'll probably give a final uh, list of how it worked out for me, but by then, I might have gained 10 pounds and have to do it all over again. Anyway. It has the look of a absolutely beautiful day. But there are supposed to be thunder showers this afternoon, but that won't matter to us. And the objective today is to find some various roads, go over them with our new suspension settings, see if we're comfortable or if we want to stiffen up the bike a little more, or if we've gone too far already. And we'll know by the end of this day. And boy, it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day out on the open road here. Thank <laughs> you. 
Anywhere out there. on some of the roads in this area, I'm about a half hour away from home, 30 miles or so, and there's a variety of roads. My, my initial impression coming out Route 80 is this was just too, too bumpy for me. The front is fine. The front is very compliant and solid feeling. When you hit a bump, you just feel the back jump up. I don't like that. Now I'm four, I'm four turns up, maybe by the end of the day, the next session I'll back down one and see if that's too many. But I know two is fine. So I think I've gone too far, but I'll know by the end of the day. Now all of these back roads, and, and these are the roads that they're typically nice and twisty, medium speeds here, and well, there's no good runoffs anywhere on these roads, to be honest. But anyway, really nice to get into this. The roads are mostly shady, so on hot days like today, it's it's absolutely beautiful. It's like you come into some nice blast of cool air. Just just a nice area. It's around Kinelon. I don't know where one town breaks to the other one. Denville and Kinelon, they're all very similar up there, Montville. It's a beautiful area. It's a half hour from my house and lots of twisty roads, just endless twisty roads. So it's about 30 miles or a half an hour riding on Route 80. There's always tons of cops, but one of the things Route 80 has there's some really nasty bumps where they've joined the old road to the new road. And to be honest, my gut feeling in the first half hour is that, that the suspension is too, too hard for my liking in the back. And it's very obvious when you make it one or, two, one or two notches too stiff, you only have to hit two or three bumps and all of a sudden you realize, uh oh, I went too far. Now sometimes you get a gut impression and then after, an example is when you ride down smooth roads with a stiff suspension, you get a false impression and you go hit a bumpy road and you go, ah, what the hell did I do? But anyway, we're learning little by little how far we can go and where the too far point is. But what I decided to do is tough out the day with the suspension setting the way it is. Even though what's a problem is no matter what, I still have to get out to my riding area every day. So with that suspension, after a half an hour, being a little on the stiff side for my body weight, what's going to happen? That's going to take a little bit of the fun out of the ride. It's going to take a lot of the fun out of the ride, that half hour it takes to get back home. And there's no realistic way to get back home without going on Route 80. And so once you have your twisty back road ride in, knowing that you have a half hour on Route 80. This is a new paved road. Check this out. It's like you go right off a cliff here. You can't really see it in this video, but this is really steep. And because it's new pavement, it's really still oily and slippery. You gotta really be careful here. Now that's the wonderful thing about modern motorcycles. Not only the ABS, that, that's a free bo a bonus like. But what's beautiful is, boy, if RDs had this ability to just tune things in, and the, the biggest thing is not to get drawn into the whole idea that the stiffer you make the bike, the better it's going to be on the street. And I wonder how many sport bike owners have stiffened up the bike, put all the settings way too tight, gone out for a ride and came back with half of the fillings missing out of their teeth. And again, I'll mention how I enjoy, and thank you Dave Morse for the channel. I have learned a whole lot, and I learn something every time I watch his channel. But again, my track days are over, my racing days are over. I just want to set up a bike for the street that's really fun to ride, and I'm well on the way to doing that. And once you have a bike that's set up perfectly, and it's fun to ride, and it's comfortable, what happens is you ride a lot more. You get more miles in it. And this bike is so flexible and so easy to tune, I would think, I would think pretty much anybody can get this to suit their riding style in just a couple of rides. And I did the same thing with the R1. I went through all the settings where it was too stiff and uncomfortable and it had low handlebars and on and on. And in the end, I got it right. It only took 11 years. Now we're on High Mountain Road right now. And even High Mountain Road that doesn't have a lot of bumps, they're minor bumps. The back still really, to me, feels a little bit too stiff. Hey, this is High Mountain Road. This is this is the most twisty. <laughs> the, 
there's, there, I don't think there's a spot on this whole road. It's about a four mile road in there. It goes up a mountain and it's just twisty, twisty to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. But it's a lot of fun. It, now, and the bike is set up nice. One thing about this bike, it is flickable. You can see a bump in the road and just, just like an RD, anybody's ever ridden an RD, you get the same ability. And on the roads up in this area, they, they should feel a lot better. But again, once you make the suspension too stiff, there's always a price to be paid if you're riding on the street. Now, not always true on the track, but I think I've got the back end just a little bit too stiff. And I think if I take one more click out of that or go back to the, the two-notch setting, I think I'm going to have it by the end of the day. The next session, I should have it pretty good. And it's turned out to be a beautiful day to do this testing. Absolutely beautiful. And the trouble is I'm having so much fun riding this bike, I don't want to even, I don't even want to put that Graves thing on until I we get some bad weather. We've had a great, great summer here. One good riding day after another. One is better than the other. Another blast down High Mountain Road. This High Mountain Road is the guy for you. If you like low, quick turns. <laughs> I don't know why I've been checking the mileage, but it's just been something fun to do with the little computer. It tells you what your mileage is. So I've gone just over 100 miles at 2.1 gallons of gas. Roughly 50 miles a gallon. So it actually was 100.9 miles, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know how accurate any of these things are, but just gives you a rough idea. I would say it's safe to say you get just under 50 miles a gallon. It's telling me the temperature is 84 degrees. That's handy to know. Now yesterday it was 48.8. Today it's 48.5 miles a gallon. Not sure if I can believe that. Not sure if I believe any of this stuff on that. Even the mileage. <laughs> Oh, but these shady roads. This is what I like. I picked, this is my shady loop. This is Kingsland Road. This is another, the whole, almost the whole road is mostly shade. And all of these shady loop roads. Now this is, this is one I picked on purpose and it has an awful lot of bumps. I'm not sure you're going to see them in this camera mount. This camera mount looks like it's way better than the first one we tried. Look real close at the road. There's a lot of And those, those tar snakes are death. You get little step outs on them on hot weather. But, but I try to get a variety of roads to, to test this stuff on. Now what happens as soon as you stiffen up the suspension in any way, these roads that when the suspension is totally soft, you just glide through and so my conclusion from uh, you know an hour or so of riding is that the back needs to come down but I'm not going to do it in two notches I'm going to do it in one notch and ride again tomorrow do another session and it I've got all the time in the world we've got another couple of months of prime riding season and I want to use it to my advantage because once this bike is set up to suit me I'm I'm done forever. Yeah, my neighbors are walking down the street here. Look at this. They always wave to me like I'm a cute guy. <laughs> if only they knew. <laughs> oh, it's so good to be home on a hot day. Get that iced coffee out. Oh, my God. Karen, get that cold coffee on. Well, it was a good day for doing this test. I think we have one more day of fooling around with this and then I'll probably wind up on setting two or three and the adjustment for the dampening. I had it out one, I had it out two, maybe I'll wind up at one and a half. I'll probably wind up three clicks out on the shock. I'm just interpolating this. I'm going to get one more day of fooling with it and then I'm going to head out back for uh, one of my non-traditional rides. Now, in my case, I always have three to four hour windows to ride, and I have about 15 loops that I can go forward or backward. 
Some of them are bumpy, some of them are shady. I try to do the shady ones when it's really hot and the sunny ones when it's really cold. Really isn't that scientific, I just enjoy riding. And in my case, it serves a lot of purposes. It gives me the exercise I need every day so I can eat like a pig. And I do. There's one final thought on this whole thing. Something I did not expect. I, I think the front forks on this bike have given me no reason to even try any adjustments other than the all soft adjustment. The bike has an incredibly planted feel and it has something that really is exceptional. You see a pothole coming and you can just, just like you can on an RD, only this is an RD with 118 horsepower. The bike is really super, super nimble, super easy to steer around. And every part of it is good. I just haven't found, I haven't found that one thing that makes me say, oh, I think I'll sell this and buy something else. And the fact that my beautiful bride, Karen, bought this for me for my birthday, my 75th birthday, it's a cherry on a Sunday. So the bottom line is we did a lot of tinkering and a lot of riding to verify what we thought was going to be the answer. The answer is pretty obvious. The bike is good to begin with. Even if you don't get it to your exact needs, or if you don't do a Dave Moss thing, the bike is very cool, very, very much fun to ride. Now, again, my gut impression is if you buy one and you're 180, 190 pounds, put the forks on all the soft settings, jack up the back one, two, three, maybe even four, put the dampening in the middle, and you're probably going to just go out and ride. Put the air at 32 pounds, 30. If it's bumpy, 30. If it's uh, smooth roads, 32. I really learned something today on Route 80, right away. As soon as I get out on Route 80, of course there's cops, it goes without saying. But there's a section in Patterson where it's like a washboard. But if you jack up the back, even one or two adjustments, you know it right away. You start taking a beating. And I wonder how many people have a sport bike and, and think that's cool. Well, maybe it is cool and I just don't know it, I'm too old. I don't know. All I can say is, and this is the bottom line of this motorcycle, this motorcycle suits me, and as I get to tune it more and more, it's going to suit me even better and better. We got the Graves thing to get rid of this Defender. I don't know when that's coming, but the way the mail is now, who the hell knows if it's in China or whatever. The radar detector saves our bacon every day, and every time I go by one of those signs where the COVID workers have Everybody, in this part of the country anyway, they have signs out everywhere. Thank you guys, thank you to all the healthcare workers. So, my feeling is I hope you enjoy the video. I make them, I enjoy making them. I like to share them with my friends. I hope you become one of my friends, and if you're not one of my friends, send me some money anyway. <laughs> Just kidding. Just, it's, it's a joke, you gotta understand. Anyway, again, hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.